hello guys uh, welcome to this uh, project video and uh, in this video i will tell you that uh, how we can use all the topics that we discussed in the last four videos to build a project on the stock market data so in the, in this video i will cover these kind of uh, topics like fundamental and sub data moving averages stock simulation portfolio optimization value at risk analysis performance analysis along with stock price prediction using the arima model okay so you need to install like this library first that can be used in the uh, project uh, part of uh, portfolio optimization as you see these three uh, data sets that i used here are already on my github profile you can check go to repositories this is our repository of financial data analysis and here is all the data sets are here okay so i just take three data sets out of it of the Atel stock, Tata Steel stock, and Nestle stock. Okay, then I just take only one stock out of it that is from of the Atel, and then I just uh, uh, read that file to build a data frame out of it. And here is our data frame here. We check for the uh, data frame information. It is already correct. As just see, I already like convert the date column to the date time here. Okay, and uh, then we check for the columns and the shape. It shows it has 15 columns and 4,774 rows. Okay, then we check for the null values as well. It has the null values in the trades column, deliverable volume column, and uh, deliverables column. Okay, so we can uh, uh, fix these kind of thing by using the median or mean uh, fill any options. So I just uh, fill the trades n uh, n values with median, and these two columns n value with the mean. Okay. So after all the data cleaning kind of stuff, we are ready to calculate for the portfolio return, mortality and other performance metrics. Okay. So the first thing we need to check for the daily returns. Okay. So as you just see, when I just uh, uh, group by my data by symbol and by the closing price of that day and then check the function of the percentage change function. This function we already discussed in our previous videos. Okay, so it just gave me that how much return it gave in at the end of the each day. Okay, so it shows the uh, uh, return percentage here. Okay, so that is our portfolio return. Okay, so the next thing we check that if there are like some returns which are NAN because the first return will always be NAN as well because uh, on the basis of that first return we are cal calculating the next return. Okay, so that that's why it is uh, NAN. So we can uh, fill that by the median value and then we calculate the uh, mean portfolio returns of these stocks at the each day. Okay, so we can get it the mean as well. So uh, we group by date and then returns and it gives us the values are here. Okay, and these all we are calculated on the ATL stock only. Okay, we not include any other kind of stock right now. Okay, so then we calculate the portfolio Mortality, it is always doing doing the same kind of thing, but here we are calculating the standard deviation because in the our uh, first video, I will uh, show you that uh, that we used standard deviation to cal cal calculate the volatility of a stock. So if there are like more than two or three stocks are in our da data set as well, then this uh, volatility values are here. But it is only one stock, that's why all the volatility values are zero. Okay, because if there are like more than one stock in our uh, data frame as well, then it has like something to compare off. Okay, it has like something to, to compare off on the same day. Because on that day, 18th Feb 2002, it is only one data entry is there of that ATL stock. Okay, but if there are like more number of stocks are there, then on that same day, we have like three, four stock entries are there. Then on the base of that entries, it can be able to assess the volatility. Okay. So that's why all the stocks are uh, uh, volatility is zero here. Then we check for the uh, risk free rate. We just uh, take a risk free rate of 0 0.03 from our own uh, uh, research or kind of uh, analysis as well. Then we divide that by 252 because in a whole year, there are only 252 trading days are there. Okay. So 
we can ca calculate the risk free rate for a daily basis then we uh, convert our portfolio return uh, this uh, series into the data frame and then we calculate the portfolio excess return by subtracting all the returns by the risk free rate and then we check for the uh, portfolio modality that we already ca calculated here as well and uh, then we calculate the Sharpie ratio and the Sharpie ratio can be easily calculated by taking the mean out of the uh, portfolio excess return and divided by the portfolio mortality and then multiply by the uh, square root of the uh, trading days that is 252. So in that way we calculate the Sharpie ratio as well and then we try to ca calculate the portfolio beta values. So the beta values are completely uh, calculated by taking a group by a uh, symbol and then returns and then calculate the covariance on that returns as well and then we build a covariance matrix here and then by using the covariance matrix we divide that covariance ma matrix by the uh, variance of the returns column and then we have our uh, portfolio beta and here we have portfolio beta of the uh, ATL stock there is a like name kind of a thing is there because uh, like uh, uh, a few e e years back the name of the ATL stock is uh, Bharti only but now it is Bharti ATL okay so then we try to uh, go to calculate the portfolio alpha values so here we do the same thing we just uh, uh, make a data frame out of the portfolio beta values these three were these two values are here and then we combine this with our whole data frame here and then we have a data frame with the beta values are available as well and to ca calculate the alpha we just subtract the portfolio excess returns from the uh, combined data beta values multiplied by the combined returns minus risk free rate so when we uh, subtract the returns from the risk free rate and multiply it with the beta beta values and then subtract it from the excess portfolio returns we get our portfolio alpha and this is the alpha of the each day so each day alpha values changes okay so then we have the alpha values here and we can uh, also make it a data frame and then merge it into the our complete data frame okay so now we have the uh, returns beta and alpha values are here okay so now let's plot these values so the first thing i plot the uh, returns plot I just take the return column here and on the basis of date I just make this plot so in this plot we will show you that on which day it has very high returns which have very low returns as well as you just see that when 2008 crisis is there the stocks are like uh, uh, plunged as well and surged as well okay so that is here and for the alpha values you can see that in the starting years the alpha values is very very small but after 2006 the alpha values change and it got increased okay so that means that the stock volatility the stock uh, uh, risk got increased as well okay so the next thing we just got to check for the uh, moving averages now okay so first we make the index of the date column then date column is index now and then we check for the moving average of 20 days and 50 day period and then we calculate the mean of that and then we have the moving area 20 and 50 uh, here as well and then we try to build a plot by using the plotly and uh, we can use the uh, close uh, column here and then these two columns here and we build a plot I you just see that the close pricing is with the blue line and the 20 day moving average is with the red line and 50 day moving average with the green line I just see the stock is uh moving as per its uh mean or as per mean of the 20 days or 50 days as well so that is a like a, a beautiful representation of the stock price and analysis by using the moving averages okay uh i hope you guys understand until this so in the next part we let's let start with the stock price uh simulation kind of thing so the first thing we just check for the last price that what is the last price of that uh, particular stock then how many days we want the 
a simulation. We want simulation for the next 30 days and time interval is one day. Then we check for the returns by taking the mean of, of the return and for the volatility by calculating the standard deviation. Okay. And then we just run a for loop of the thousand simulations for the number of days that we want. Like we want for the next 30 days. And this is the formula to calculate the simulation here. And then we just append these prices into this prices list. And then in the simulation diff, we make a simulation uh, data frame as well. Okay. So then after all this thing get, we just plot this simulation data frame by taking the index column and the simulation column here. And then we see that these are the like 100 simulations of that uh, ATL stock. So in the next 30 days, it, it can go either of these 100 ways. So that is a, like a, a complete Monte Carlo simulation of that stock price. Okay. So let's just talk about the another thing that we just hear. And th th that is the topic of the uh, portfolio optimization. Okay. So let's just say we have like these three uh, uh, stocks in our portfolio and we, we want to know that uh, uh, what is the expected return or what is the risk of that stock in our portfolio so that we can easily optimize it the uh, amount of that stock in our portfolio. Okay. So for that kind of thing, I just uh, completely read that all kind of uh, data frames here and then made a combined uh, data frame out of it. I remove all the kind of uh, null values out of it, then calculate the returns and covariance metrics by using this library. So that library I, I just installed at the like uh, starting of the video. So that is the same uh, library here. It has two functions, expected returns and risk models. So when I just uh, uh, calculate the returns and uh, returns is just, just the, as we calculated in the above, it is the mean of the uh, return column. And then we can do the covariance matrix here. Okay. So from using the efficient frontier, efficient frontier is used to uh, kind of a build a kind of a, a portfolio optimization matrix kind of thing that can be used to visualize it and to help us un un understand better about our uh, portfolio stocks. Okay. So we just pass our returns and covariance matrix in, into this uh, efficient frontier uh, function and then we calculate the maximum uh, Sharpie value of our each stock that we have like Atel, uh, Tata Steel's or uh, Nestle as well. And then we check for the clean weights and we ca ca calculate the portfolio performance. Okay. When we calculate the portfolio performance, we also set some kind of foot target returns that how much values that um, uh, we can expect out of it. So for that, you need to know what is the maximum uh, return that stock can give to you. So I know that uh, my each stock can uh, give me around like up to 18% uh, maximum return on that uh, stock. So I just set here 0 0.18. Okay. And then I just run a for loop and then calculate this efficient frontier for each of the uh, target return and calculate the expected return. And then I build a uh, plot around this and this is our graph. So in this graph, it shows that your uh, frontier return and the volatility and the expected return. So if you need like more returns, your risk could be more higher as well. Okay. So that that is only for the one stock. That is only for the one stock. That is only for the ATL stock. Okay. So what if we want to know for the all the stocks? Okay. So for that kind of thing, I just take all these stocks into consideration Adel, Tata Steel, Nestle, Britannia, Coal, ICIC and the Titan. I just use the same kind of code that I used above and at the here I just set the target return in negative because uh, out of all these stocks one stock has the maximum uh, return that is in the negative value. So I just set it, set it, set it into the negative value so that all the stock returns can be above that value. Okay. So when I just try to calculate the expected returns or the portfolio performance out of using this uh, code, it is the same code that I used above, uh, like this, this code only. 
okay so then i use this code up above here to calculate the portfolio optimization code and then it shows me uh that these are my values that can be expected out, out of the maximum returns and volatility as well when i plot it it shows me this that your nestle stock is more stable stock because it has not much volatility and it has give good good returns as well in the past period as well but your stock of the titan is the most versatile stock and also have the less returns as compared to the nestle stock so in that way you know that like uh, which of your stocks are like more uh, risk stock or which which of your stocks are like less risk stocks so on the base of that you can optimize your uh, portfolio okay so the next thing we have is the risk analysis and performance analysis so we can calculate the risk of all these uh, stocks and we check that uh, how much risk that these stocks can have and uh, how these stocks are performing as well okay so we just use the same code to read all the data sets as well and combine it and drop all the kind of values can calculate the returns covariance metrics and then use the portfolio optimization kind of a thing here and then print out the expected return volatility sharpie ratio and for the risk an analysis as well i just calculate the weighted array then portfolio returns and then variance at the 95 percent uh significance level then 90 percent significance level so at that kind of thing then for the uh portfolio performance we can calculate the simulated re returns as well and then simulated values simulated returns are here so it shows that our expected return of if we have all these stocks in our stock in our portfolio so at that time your expected return is about like 19 percent okay because you have volatility of the uh 22 percent you have sharpie ratio of 78 percent and this is your risk analysis so 95 percent chances are there you can lost like almost your uh, uh 1.7 percent of your uh, portfolio and uh, uh, three percent of your portfolio so that is a very less chance chances to loss any kind of uh, money in these stocks okay and then this is the performance standard this is the sharpie ratio of these stocks okay so the next thing we try to predict our uh, price of these stocks so i just uh, build a kind of this uh, function here that uses the date and the close close column only and then by taking taking these two columns i just uh, do the first test train split and then like uh, uh, build this model and fit all the uh, test train data on my model with the start index and end index and then forecast for the uh, test data as well and then ca calculate the root mean square error as well and then plot the uh, stock with the prediction as well so i just uh call this kind of predict stock function for all of my stocks okay so this this is the first atl stock this is the root mean square of the atl stock this is the graph of the atl stock so this uh this is the graph of that atl stock this is the graph of the tata steel stock with the prediction and actual and this is the nestle stock this is the britannia stock coal stock icc stock and tata high titan stock are here so these uh, predictions are like not so much accurate because we use only the arima models here but if we use the uh, deep learning models or uh, many much more advanced uh, models as well then these uh, predictions are uh, close to more accurate as well okay so i hope you guys like understand all about the uh, finance data analysis with this project and all these uh, topics are completely understand to you on the basis of this a uh, small project so we'll meet in our next video with more advanced topics about the finance domain so we'll see you and uh, don't forget to like subscribe and share our youtube channel as well and uh, keep learning <laughs>